Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. I greet our brethren who are following us through YouTube and the brethren from Jacksonville, Pastor Gerald, and the brethren here present with the peace of the Lord. While you're seated, let's open our Bibles in the book of Luke. Luke. Luke 24. Luke 24. Luke 24, verse 28 onwards. Amen. Luke 24, 28 says the following. Exato. E chegaram à aldeia para onde iam, e ele fez como quem ia para mais longe. E eles os constrangeram, dizendo: Fica conosco, porque já é tarde. E já declinou o dia, e entrou para ficar com eles. E aconteceu que, entrando com eles à mesa, tomando o pão, o abençoou, e partiu, e lhe, lhe, e lhe deu. Abriram-se-lhes, então, os olhos, e o conheceram. E ele desapareceu-lhes. E disseram um para o outro, Porventura não ardia em nós, o nosso coração, quando pelo caminho nos falava, e quando nos abria as Escrituras, e na mesma hora, levantando-se, tornaram para Jerusalém. E acharam congregados os onze e os que estavam com eles, os quais diziam, ressuscitou verdadeiramente o Senhor. E já apareceu a Simão, e eles lhes contaram o que lhes aconteceram no caminho, e como deles foi conhecido no Partido do Pão. Amém? Meus irmãos. And my brethren, here we see the experience of two men. Two men that are knowledgeable of the scriptures. And the scriptures, we know that they are the Bible, the Word of God. So the Bible, we can say that it is a group of uh, sacred writings that were preserved, that came to our days. In our days, and, and came to us with great care, and came to our days through bold and courageous servants, Israelite servants, that with all care in the world, they maintained and kept the Bible, preventing from any alteration, and what was the inspiration of God giving to 40 men, servants of God. 40 people and these people we see kings princes people that were there to serve and they had an experience with the Lord in the Bible so the Bible we can state that it is not only it not only contains the Word of God but it is in fact, the Word of God. There are people and groups, religious groups, that are saying out there that the Bible only contains the Word of God. But our experience, our experience by faith, is to state and to say to the world that the Bible is, in fact, the Word of God. There is no way so many different people believing in different times and different years the Bible was written in and a total of and span of six, 1600 years 
the Old Testament was written before Jesus and the New Testament in about from the year 40 after Jesus until the beginning of the first century. So then when we begin to read the Word of God, when we begin to study the Word of God, when we begin to understand the mysteries of God that are in the Word of God, because it is necessary for man to discover not, on, not only the inspiration, man cannot only have the inspiration of God, which is the latter, in the sense that what God, what the Holy Spirit spoke to the ears of those servants, but it is also necessary for man to know the revelation of God, what is beyond the inspiration, what is beyond the letter. It is important because we are going to see the person of Jesus not only in the New Testament. When we when you begin to unfold the mysteries of God that are contained in the Word of God, the Bible, what you do what you carry a few are black and the other are white. Well, the Bible. This book here, and it's a collection of 66 books. When we begin to discover the mysteries of God and begin to understand the revelation, when the Holy Spirit leads you to study the Bible in fellowship after you pleading for the blood and praying to the Lord and forgetting the things that are out there, the concerns, the bills, you sit down, you pray to the Lord, you seek fellowship and then when you begin to study the word you will see that Jesus is in throughout the entire word Jesus did not just appear in the New Testament physically yes because the prophecy pointed out to Jesus so when we begin to know the Bible and we begin to know the Word of God, which is a living Word of God, you see Jesus right at the beginning of the creation. Jesus was present there, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. When everything was created, everything was made. You see the person of Jesus there in the first disobedience of man, when man opened up his heart to hear the voice or the voice, the voice of the enemy, you see there the illustration of Jesus and the animal that was killed and that animal, that victim that had nothing to do with the disobedience of Adam and Eve, but that animal was killed. Why? So that God could make tunic garments to cover their sin, cover their failure, to cover their disobedience. An animal, yes, was killed. And you see Jesus throughout the word. You see Jesus in the illustration of the lamb. There in the departure of the people from Egypt. When the Jewish people left Egypt, a lamb was killed, was 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 cooked completely and there its blood was placed on the posts of the doors and you also see the person of Jesus when Isaac was about to be sacrificed when Isaac when Abraham his father fulfilling the orientation of the Lord uh, Abraham was there with his son Isaac when Abraham was about to kill and obey obeying the Word of God faithfully with a broken heart, I'm sure, with pain in his heart, but when he was about to do that, he heard a voice saying, don't do this, it was the voice of God. And then looked to the side and he saw a lamb. And this lamb was sacrificed in Isaac's stead. And we see Jesus throughout the Bible. We could stand, spend here the whole night. You see Jesus in the rock that was hurt by Moses so that people would not die of 
thirst. You see, Jesus threw out the word. And we see the text that we just read. It speaks about the experience of two men that knew the scriptures as we read. That they saw the physical person of Jesus being used by God and exercising his earthly ministry. Jesus performed miracles, preaching, proclaiming a new kingdom, saying what was going to happen to him because it was already prophesied. The scriptures that they so eagerly said that they knew, but what they knew was just the letter because the revelation of what was prophesied, the understanding, what Jesus told them, they forgot. And this is the great mistake that man makes when he forgets the revelation of God. The text that we read already shows a moment in which everything is fulfilled and on the third day, Jesus resurrects. The prophecy was fulfilled. What Jesus said to the disciples was fulfilled. This man was surely waiting for everything to happen. And the day here, when you begin to read in the first verse of chapter 24, the first day of the week, very early in the day, the women went to the tomb sisters they went there to see the body of Jesus Christ because in the previous day it was Saturday no Sabbath nobody could go there so Sunday morning very early they went there hastily when Jesus was there it was already Friday late on Friday and now early in first day uh, of the week Sunday morning they run there and Jesus was already resurrected and these two disciples didn't see any type of nothing, no change, nobody speaking or mentioning about Jesus that had resurrected. They even say that when they begin to have, when you see the conversation they had with Jesus, they say, hey, even there are a few women, they said that they saw him alive, but we didn't see anything, no change no disturbance in the city, nothing happened. So then we decided to go away. So when we didn't see Jesus resurrected, when they decide to go away, leave in Jerusalem, Jesus meets with them. Same day, Jesus meets with them to begin to speak with them. And it's interesting that they did not know that that person was Jesus. And as they had a conversation with Jesus, about Jesus, regarding Jesus, what was on the scriptures, they did not realize that it was Jesus that was speaking to them. Because Jesus at that moment had this body, his body was glorified, it was a new revealed body. And many times, my brethren, man, man thinks that they know Jesus. Many people inside of the churches think that they know Jesus. People carry the Bible, they're part of the praise group. And they say, oh, I know Jesus. I go to the church, I'm part of the, the groups. I sing and this and that. And they really say, I know Jesus. And others say, no, Jesus doesn't speak with me. I don't know why. Jesus doesn't. I'm inside of the church. Jesus doesn't speak with me, but Jesus is speaking to man. You are the one that many times don't understand. The Holy Spirit is revealing itself to man. The Holy Spirit is showing to man the, the stand that man needs to have. The Holy Spirit is, is bothering man's heart and revealing to man, showing and speaking prepare our life because soon Jesus will return and many are ignoring this many are living like if Jesus 
What's that? Many are living inside of the church and outside of the church like if Jesus was simply a physical person, a body, a dead body. Well, the scriptures spoke about him, but now he died and it's over. People ignore Jesus. But Jesus is now speaking to man. God is manifesting. God is revealing himself to man. But it is necessary for us to know Jesus. Not because of what he is, but what, what he did and because of what he is doing and because he is ought to do in our lives. When Jesus began to have a conversation with them, they did not notice, they didn't even know, imagine that at any moment that he was Jesus. And Jesus began to speak, hey, you have not understood. The prophet spoke, you're confused. You are taking too long to discern things. You don't believe in the word. You don't believe the prophecies. You don't believe the prophets. And now Jesus make it like if he was going farther. Jesus went to all the way to the city of Amos and now Jesus acted like he was going farther. But those two men said, no, it's late. Why don't you come and enter into our house? It's late. It's dangerous. Why don't you stay with us this night? And then Jesus entered. He sat at the table with them. And when Jesus doing the supper, when they were about to eat, the way Jesus picked up the bread and broke the, the bread, at that moment their eyes opened. And they realized that Jesus was there right next to them. And they realized that Jesus was sitting at the table with them. And they were able to participate in that supper. And they received a blessing from the part of God. And my brethren, what God has to do for us tonight is exactly this. Man does not need to ignore what is God's. Man does not, cannot in any way possible live a life away from the presence of God. It is no way out for man. There is no other alternative for man other than in, in order for man to become eternal other than through God, through Jesus. That's why Jesus came to the world to give man this unique opportunity of returning to God, of having once again fellowship with God, of having an, another experience and another opportunity so that he may live in eternity in the presence of God. Only Jesus but it's necessary, man, to understand and live the Word of God, the living Word. Not only like, like inspiration, not, on, not only the letter, not only the Bible, the Word, the Word of life, but the Bible, the living Word. But when man understands this and he allows the Holy Spirit to be operating in his heart, man truly feels God's presence. So we have a few important points here in the Word, in this message. The first is to know the history, but give import importance and worth to the prophecy. Knowing the history, but living the prophecy. Knowing history, but allowing God to speak to your heart. Another important point, the stand. What the place where they were. They were in Jerusalem. And they left Jerusalem. When they met with Jesus, when they recognized Jesus, what did they do? The moment that they, uh, their eyes was open, Jesus departed. Isn't it true? Jesus vanished. Then they spoke to one another. We have no other alternative. Now we have to return to Jerusalem. Because there in Jerusalem, is a place that they should never have left. Because Jerusalem is the place of the blessing. Jerusalem is the place of promise. Jerusalem is a place of fellowship. 
And man, when he, he will only have his life complete when he is in fellowship with God. Outside of Jerusalem, outside of fellowship, outside of the place of promise, there's no other way. And Jesus said, I'm going farther. So then they came home and they said, oh, I'm going to, to farther away. And they said, no, our dwelling is here. But God's dwelling is much farther. The dwelling of Jesus, the dwelling of the Holy Spirit is in heaven, is in eternity. And Jesus said, I'm going farther away. I cannot. Why is that? Because man, when man dies to this life, when man says goodbye to this life, what awaits us is an eternity in the house of the Father. Because there, there are many dwellings eternal dwellings and when they recognized Jesus as he broke the bread at the moment in which they were led to know the war the church the breaking of the bread when Jesus present his body which is prophetically what was going to happen Jesus vanishes why is that because many people they think that following Jesus it's just when Jesus is physically in your presence and others think that serving Christ to be in fellowship with God is only when you enter into the church when you enter the church then Jesus is there oh what a blessing Jesus is in the church there I will be a changed person I will be a better person I'm gonna be a different person but when I not seeing Jesus at work on the street, wherever I go, whomever I live with, it's not important because Jesus is not there. I don't see Jesus physically. I don't see the person of Jesus there. Away from Jesus, I can be who I was, as I w always was, giving bad, bad testimony, having a foul mouth, deceiving people, mistreating people. Why is that? Because Jesus is not present physically. I don't see Jesus. So when his eyes were open, the first thing that happened, Jesus vanishes. Why is that? Because we need to serve Jesus, serve God by faith. Man, the experience of man in serving God is through faith. Because if it's not by faith, it's a sin. If you don't serve God, because of what he is if you don't serve God by faith my brother and sister you're running a great risk of not understanding God's project if it is difficult for you to deny the things of the world if it is difficult for you to l having to let go of the things of the world you have not understood the project of God at any moment we will turn your back and say oh Jesus is taking too long to to come is really the third day and nothing happens I thought that he was going to return this year nothing it's difficult so I think I'm going to I think that this story about Jesus return and fourth trumpet is all you no know, fable this is not adding up so I think I'm gonna have to go uh, move on with my life and do what I did before because it's been 20 years that I'm in the church and Jesus does not return I don't think that it's going to work out it's better for me to move on and they move on with their lives and let me go you have not understood God's project you are simply being a carrier of the Bible you just carry your Bible I'm sorry to say that it is it is a shame because when man does that when man does not allow to be governed by the Holy Spirit when there is no new birth when man does not live a life of sanctification seeking the Lord and thinking that they because they are inside of the church deceiving people deceiving God well it doesn't happen you have not understood the project of salvation 
You haven't understood what God has for you. But my man knows Jesus. And he experienced the breaking of the bread. And he knows what he needs to do. Open up his heart. Be in fellowship with the church. Living in harmony. Seeking the Lord. Living, setting yourself apart from the world. Living in church is this. Living in a spiritual environment is this. Letting go of the things of the world. And you participating of the supper. Breaking, of, eating of the bread and drinking of the wine. So, is understanding the mechanism of the church, how the church works, what you need to do, what is your role inside of the gospel, what is your role with the word of God, what you need to carry to men outside, out there. When you understand this, that the word of God, living the gospel, is way beyond what many say, then you are living the word of God. Then you recognize that Jesus have always been beside you. That Jesus always spoke to you. That Jesus would, had always his hands extended towards you, ready to help you. Jesus always took care of you in moments of difficulties, of pain, of anguish, of indecision. As it, is it possible? Is this what I need to do? God has always been at man's reach. And when you participate on that, the wine, eat of the wine, uh, eat of the bread and drink of the wine. When the blood of Jesus, uh, the bread rep representing the body of Christ, and the wine representing the blood of Jesus, when you allow yourself to be controlled by the Holy Spirit, the first thing that you do is to return to Jerusalem, because the blessing is in being in Jerusalem. That's why Jesus said, "Remain in Jerusalem until you be." Uh, emboldened with power the place of the church is in Jerusalem not the geographic Jerusalem but the spiritual Jerusalem because that's where we are going to and when they returned they were able to testify of what was their experience they no longer had an experience with Jesus that was mistreated a Jesus that was was slapped in the face, I just that was deceived, I just was betrayed. They all know that. I just was imprisoned, he was, uh, spanked, he was whipped, he was crucified. Between two criminals, they understood all of this. But what they didn't know still, what they did not have, their own experience was with the glorified Jesus. The Jesus, the victorious Jesus. Jesus that overcame death. A Jesus that opened up the fount. When Jesus died, the veil of the, of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. Giving man the means to have direct access to God. It didn't happen before. This Jesus, they noticed that he was he. Well, at the breaking of the bread, when Jesus entered into the house, when Jesus sat down at their table and revealed himself to them, they opened up their eyes and were able to glorify the Lord. And tonight, that's the will of the Lord tonight. You don't need to, to exchange your Bible. Nobody needs to exchange their Bible. No, no, I'm going to get a, a newer Bible because this one is going to look better I'm going to read more you don't need this what you need to do is seek the revelation of God through the word the understanding and ask the Lord to change your understanding regarding what God has for you that's what we need to do we need to live what God has and if you tonight he have not had this experience with this revealed Jesus, with this glorified Jesus, with this Jesus that died but is at the right side of the Father, a Jesus that did everything for you, that does everything for you. If you have not had this experience still with him, my brother and sister, tonight is the night. 
don't leave this place without having this experience with Jesus. It's not with the matter of the church. It's not being part of anything. No, we need to have an experience with Jesus and living by faith, hearing the voice of God. Amen. May the Lord bless us. We're going to hear a song now. Glory to God. We're going to have a word of adoration to the name of God. Lord, we want to praise you. We had another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. 
for knowing, Lord, how that day you scheduled a meeting with your servants and on that way was revealed to them the living God, the prosperous God, the God that died on the cross of Calvary. You are today, Lord, privileged for living out work that's been revealed where you're present every day as we get up, as we go to bed, at work. You are present in our lives. Glorify your name, Lord, because every day you have proven your love and your blessings in our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. The Lord gave a couple of spiritual gifts to the church, to the service tonight. And the first gift the Lord was showing the situation of a woman and she had garments, but they were, the, the clothing that she was wearing was very poorly kept. They, it was even ripped in a couple of parts and also dirty. And she was seen by others as a beggar. And people questioned her asking why didn't she Uh, exchanged her garments to have a better appearance well because uh, the garments they gave a very, very bad impression and she would answer saying that those garments they were not like this before they were different but tonight the Lord entered it will go to her and brought to her new garments and she would take possession of this, this exchange and she would leave this place very happy. The word tells us that man needs to have his, his uh, waist girded with the shield of justice. Man needs to have receive a blessing needs to receive the armor of God, what is part of a courageous per soldier. And this woman, surely she, she leaves the gospel, but not the gospel that was left by God, not the eternal gospel, not the genuine gospel. She experienced the gospel, she knows the word, and she had experience because the garments were different, but with time came forgetfulness she forget what is the prophetic and her garments get dirty and ripped up giving her this appearance of a beggar and in Psalms it says the following I was youth I never seen in my entire life 37 25 Psalms 27 37 25 I was youth and now I'm old but I have never seen uh, the righteous let down and his descendants to beg for bread if you are righteous God is going to honor you but the righteousness that Jesus is speaking is not the righteousness because you're a good person but the righteousness because you are justified by Jesus our righteousness is in Jesus we are not good because we are good people we are justified because Jesus justified us. What he did for us on the cross of Calvary, his blood was shed. His blood makes us righteous in God's presence. What we once were, what we did, our uh, poor uh, the state of being poor, how small we were, living on the mud pit of uh, sin, leaving us beggars that nobody wants to come close to us. Now in Jesus, we are being justified and we will no longer beg for bread. In other words, we will never lack the word of God. We are not going to lack the sustenance, the food. We will never lack the direction and the revelation of Jesus because we are already experiencing, have experienced this and that's what causes us to return always to the house of God. So we see this, this sister, you need to have this experience. What we experienced in the past, it's in the past. Your experience with Jesus and with salvation in the past needs to be renewed today. Because salvation is dynamic. 
Salvation is experienced every day. Not only here in the church, but when people say, oh, I'm going to the church because I'm going to see God. I'm going to the church because Jesus is there. He's going to bless me. But tomorrow is going to be a bust. What we experienced, you need to experience. You seek today for a new experience. An experience with life. And Jesus was always already showing in other gifts the situation of that many need to have an understanding regarding the word that, that is perfected. So what you think about the Bible, you need to seek from the Lord the understanding, the prophetic understanding of what God has for you, the project of God for your salvation. Amen. The Lord also has shown this. I invite the church to stand up. The Lord is also giving a blessing to the families here. Blessing their professional life. The Lord saying that He's going to answer prayers. Sometimes things take a little too long, but God is in control. The church lives by faith. We live in complete dependency on the Lord. Amen. Let's continue.
Lord to Jesus. Lord to God. Lord, we praise your holy name. And our desire, Lord, is to go to heaven. To see your glory. And to walk in the streets of gold. In the streets of gold, Lord. And to discover what is in your word. The truth of your word. And to know that we were not deceived that never your word has forsaken us Lord we praise you because salvation is real while many ignore but we are here beneath your hands blessing hands we feel that we are privileged because we can hear a voice we can hear a sweet voice speaking constantly to our hearts. We glorify you for our opportunity, for our call, for the day, Lord, in which our life took a new direction and that we return to Jerusalem where we know that this is our place. Receive our praise and our adoration. And we ask that this week may be a week of victories. And that your church, Lord, may receive the ministration of the Lord in our behalf. Receive this service and our adoration, our praise. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the name of say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit may be proud upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We at your disposal to pray for you. If the spiritual gift spoke to you, one of the gifts, if in, in any moment of the service you receive, you were touched by the Holy Spirit and we want prayer, we are here at our disposal. This is the year of the youth. I ask the church to be praying for the activity of the youth and that the Lord may be continue to use our youth, giving them experiences and that they may always have in their lips a song of praise to the Lord. Amen. I, s I wish the whole church the peace of the Lord. <laughs> 